Hey YouTubers, it's Lonnie Clark, that's for art. Um, I decided I'm going to be reading a new article for us. <laughs> you know me, I like to read. <laughs> and I thought I would share this with you because this is vital information. So I'm just going to read everything. And then um, be, uh, what I'm going to do today is read the intro and the short biography of this. And then we'll get into the reading. The title of it is called Human Radiation Studies, Remembering the Early Years, Oral History of John, Dr. John W. Goffman, MD, PhD, Department of Energy, United States of America, conducted December 20th, 1994, United States Department of Energy, Office of Human Radiation Experiments, June 1995. The following is a copy of the original file. It has a email address, but it's not there anymore. I've looked, so I'll spare you that. This section on Dr. John W. Goffman, MD, PhD, quote, covers Goffman's research at the University of California, Berkeley, his pioneering studies in heart disease, his founding and directing of Lawrence Livermore's biomedical program, his conflicts with the Atomic Energy Commission, and the evolution and controversy of his opinions on radiation risk, unquote. So this is uh, the DOE Openness, Human Radiation Experiments, Roadmap to the Projects, Oral Histories, Oral Histories, DOE forward slash EH0457. I've looked for that. Um, it's no longer available. Health, and these are the other ones that they did, and I have not had time to research them, but they did one with health physicist William J. Blair, Ph.D., biochemist Waldo E. Cohen, Ph.D., Dr. Patricia Wallace Durbin, Ph.D., I wonder if she's related to uh, Senator Durbin, Meryl Eisenbud, no title, but that's her name, Meryl Eisenbud, Dr. Nadine Foreman, MD, radiologist Heimer L. Friedel, MD, PhD, health physicist Carl C. Gamerstfelder, G-A-M-E-R-S-M-E-R-T-S-F-E-L-D-E-R, Gamerstfelder, PhD, Dr. John W. Goffman, MD, PhD, that's what we're about to read. Radiation biologist Marvin Goldman, PhD. Julie Lingham Grilly, no title. John W. Healy, no title. And hematologist Carl F. Hubner, PhD. The contents. Forward, short biography. Overline College. Enrollment in Western Reserve Medical School to University of California, Berkeley to study physical chemistry. Assisting Seaborg's research, discovery of uranium-233, the Manhattan Project. Oh my gosh. There's a whole other list of oral histories that they did, so I'm going to finish with the contents, and then I'll go back. From research to laboratory production of plutonium, Joe Hamilton's cavalier approach to radiation, medical treatments with radioactive phosphorus, P32P, conflict between University of California, San Francisco, and Berkeley, reflections on Ernest Lawrence, Heart Disease Studies, AEC Support for Heart Disease Studies, Heparin and Lipoprotein Research with Human Subjects, Radiophosphorus Therapy for Polycythemia Vera, Pre-1945 Medical Use of High Dosage Radiation, Attitudes Towards Radiation in AEC's Biological and Medical Program. Establishing Livermore Laboratory's Division of Biology in Medicine, 1962. Quote, Jack, we all, 
All we want is the truth, unquote. That's a chapter. Hmm. Livermore Biomedical Department's work on fallout and plowshare, 1963-1965. The controversy over nuclear-armed anti-ballistic missiles, 1969. Ethical responsibility to prove technology is safe. Linking radiation to breast cancer, 1965. Conflict within the AEC on low-level effects of radiation, 1969. Testifying before Congress on radiation effects. Goffman and Tamplin ostracized. Hmm. Benefits of radiation therapy and ethics. Concern over low-dose harm. Public acceptance of nuclear energy. Attempt to discredit Goffman's testimony in Johnson v. U.S. The need for cultural change at the Department of Energy. AEC, AEC responds with sanctions to Goffman's public dissent, 1972. Wow. Return to Berkeley. Reflections on career decisions. The controversy over low dosage harm. Skepticism about the value of formal arms control agreements. Motivation during the Manhattan Project. Ethics and human radiation experiments. Finally, message from John Goffman. So the rest of the people that they talked about is oral history of radiologist Henry I. Cohen, MD, PhD, medical physicist Catherine L. Lathrop, and physician Paul V. Harper, pathologist Clarence Lushbau, MD, health physicist Constantine J. Malek, Skos, M-A-L-E-T-S-K-O-S, Ph.D., radiologist Earl R. Miller, M.D., health physicist Carl Z. Morgan, Ph.D., biochemist William D. Moss, physiologist Nello Pace, cell biologist Don Francis Peterson, Ph.D., Radiobiologist Chet Richmond, Ph.D. Physician James S. Robertson, M.D., Ph.D. Biophysicist Robert E. Rowland, Ph.D. Biophysicist Cornelius A. Tobias, Ph.D. Biochemist John Randolph Totter, Ph.D. Oh my gosh. Oncologist Helen Vodapik, M.D. George, Dr. George Veols, M.D., V-E-O-L-Z. Donner Lab Administrator Baird G. Whale. Okay. The department has produced a roadmap to the large universe of pertinent information Human Radiation Experiments, the Department of Energy Roadmap to the Story and Records, DOE forward slash HE-0445, February 1995. The collected documents are also accessible through the Internet World Wide Web under blah 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 not available. The passage of time, the state of existing records, and the fact that some decision-making processes were never documented in written form caused the department to consider other means to supplement the documentary record. In September 1994, the Office of Human Radiation Experiments, in collaboration with, Berkeley, with Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory, began an oral history project to fulfill this goal. The project involved interviewing researchers and others with first-hand knowledge of either human radiation experimentation that occurred during the Cold War or the institutional context in which such experimentation took place. 
The purpose of this project was to enrich the documentary record, provide missing information, and allow the researchers an opportunity to provide their perspective. 30 audio taped interviews were conducted from September 1994 through January 1995. Interviewees were permitted to review the transcripts of their oral histories. Their comments were incorporated into the vinyl version of the transcript if those, contents, if those comments supplemented, clarified, or corrected the contents of the interviews. The Department of Energy is grateful to the scientists and researchers who agreed to participate in this project many of whom were pioneers in the development of nuclear medicine. Disclaimer. The opinions expressed by the interviewee are his own and do not necessarily reflect those of the U.S. Department of Energy. The department neither endorses nor disagrees with such views. Moreover, the Department of Energy makes no representation as to the accuracy or completeness of the information provided by the interviewee. Information. They put a dash there. That was weird. So, let me get a little sip of water, folks. I'm going to read to you the short biography. How short is it? I mean, let me skip ahead and see how short it really is. I think I looked at it. It's only like a page. C, 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 only one page. So I'm going to read this to you. Oral History of John W. Goffman, MD, Ph.D. Conducted on December 20th, 1994 in San Francisco, California by Loretta Hefner, archivist for the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory, and Carolyn Gorley, a researcher for the Office of Human Radiation Experiments, U.S. Department of Energy, DOE. John Doug W. Goffman was selected for the Oral History Project because of his research at the University of California, Berkeley, and his biomedical work at the Lawrence Livermore Radiation Laboratory. The Oral History covers Dr. Goffman's co-discovery of uranium-233, his involvement with isolating the first milligram of plutonium, his work as founder of the director of the biomedical program at Lawrence Livermore, and the evolution of his opinions on the effects of radiation on humans. Short Biography Dr. Goffman was born in Cleveland, Ohio on September 21, 1918. He received a B.A. In, bi in chemistry from Oberlin University in Oberlin, Ohio in 1939. He received a Ph.D. in nuclear physical chemistry from the University of California, Berkeley. He received his M.D. from the School of Medicine, University of California at San Francisco in 1946. He married in 1940 and has one grown child. Dr. Goffman began his career by working for the Plutonium Project as part of the Manhattan Project at the University of California, Berkeley from 1941 to 1943. During that time, he developed two processes for separating plutonium from the uranium and fission products of irradiated fuel. Let me read that again. During that time, he developed two processes for separating plutonium from the uranium and fission products of irradiated fuel. This work, conducted with Dr. Glenn Seaborg, was the precursor to full-scale plutonium production at the Hanford Nuclear Site in Washington. Between 1947 and 1951, Goffman was a physician in radioisotope therapy at the Donner Clinic, University of California, Berkeley. From 1947 to 1954, Goffman was an assistant professor of medical physics in the Division of Medical Physics, Department of Physics at the University of California, Berkeley. In 1954, this position turned into a full professorship, and in December 1973, 
It became a professorship emeritus, a position he continues to hold today. He was the medical director of Lawrence Radiation Laboratory Livermore from 1954 to 1957. The medical director. From 1963 to 1969, he was the associate director of the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory. And from 1963 to 1966, he was director founder of the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory Division of Biology and Medicine. Goffman has published many times on such topics as the following lipoproteins, atherosclerosis, and coronary heart disease. Intra ultra centrifugal discovery and analysis of serum lipoproteins. The relationship of human chromosomes to cancer. The biological and medical effects of ionizing radiation with particular reference to cancer, leukemia, and genetic diseases. And the lung cancer hazard of plutonium. Wow. So then we get into this. So I'm going to stop here. Tomorrow night we will continue uh, at the beginning. It says Oberlein College Enrollment in Western Reserve Medical School. So we're back at it, educating ourselves and getting information that's being suppressed. So uh, education will help us understand how the doctors and the physicists have all been lied to. This is going to explain a lot. So put your courage feet on, you guys. Take some action. Call a legislator. Call your mayor. Send your mayor some information about Fukushima. Send your county commissioner some information about Fukushima. I actually had a client today who told me, you know what? You woke me up on this. Like, I'm really, I had never even thought about it. But when you talked to me about it two years ago, I took that to heart. And he actually has taken action. So it matters, you guys. Talk to you tomorrow night. I'm going to make an effort to read this every night a little bit until we're done. Ciao.